Welcome back to another edition of Cape Ann Today, folks. Heather and I are joined by Tess McColgan. She is the new executive director for Discover Gloucester. Congratulations, Tess. How are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So, okay. How did this all come about? Where did you come from? Yeah. <laughs> how long do you have? No, just yeah. kidding. Um, right before this, I was working for the city of Beverly. I was working for their council on aging, which is a really, really cool job. Um, and before that, I was working in Boston for Roslindale Village Main Street, which is where I really fell in love with that local economic development piece. Oh. Um, so, and I've also had experience promoting local arts and culture, working, as I was just telling you about Corey, on Boston Neighborhood Network for a little show called It's All About Arts. Um, and I used, I, I hail from Boston, so I've moved up to the North Shore just a few years ago, and I've, this opportunity came along and it was kind of perfect for me. We were moving to Gloucester and I absolutely love Gloucester. It's a beautiful area. Um, and it's just a, a great opportunity to promote all that it has to offer and to be completely immersed in that world, tell Gloucester's unique story. Yeah. I was going to ask, oh, sorry, Heather. I was just going to ask like, Tessie, like your first impressions of Gloucester and the arts and the culture and the fishing industry, et cetera, et cetera. That was my question too. Oh, good. Took it. <laughs> My first impressions, I mean, it's a really culturally dense place uh, and historically dense, right? There's so much rich maritime history. We have two cultural districts, which is unique to Gloucester. We're actually the only city in Massachusetts, and that's a little spoiler alert for something else I want to talk about, um, that has two cultural districts. So Wait, which are the, oh, Rocky Neck and downtown? Rocky Neck and Harbor Town is the technical name for like the downtown cultural district um, and there's been so much innovation here too we have this magical mix of being an island and we really are technically an island separated by a river but we're not too far from the mainland we're not too far from urban experiences in Boston and Salem and Beverly and we are our own little hub of innovation and history and arts and culture and the maritime aspect of that has been um, hugely impactful on the economy here and really on the economy on the whole East Coast as I'm educated by Maritime Gloucester next door. I'm, I'm learning more about that. So it's, it's been really cool to, to start to learn about all of that history. Mm. Yeah. So how are you, um, how are you connecting yourself to the website? I mean, it's a wonderful website and it's really great at, at presenting who Gloucester is and what's going on around here. So how are you beginning to engage in that? Are you and I'm not really quite sure what I'm asking, but maybe you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. Um, we have a beautiful website. It's amazing. Like our website is a wealth of information. I apologize if there's a little background noise. There's a, yeah. is a little noisy. Um, so our website has categories that you can go to as a visitor to learn all about the different attractions in Gloucester, places to stay, places to eat, things to do. Uh, and, and we update it constantly. We have a great events calendar that is open to everyone. So all community organizations for free can submit events to be promoted through our calendar. And a new addition to our website, which I'm really excited to announce here, is our plan your visit tool. So this is a new tool. It's a new section of our website. Now, if you go to our website, you'll see our mascot, this little lobster named Lob Lolly, and he's holding a sign in the corner and it says, hey, plan your visit. And if you click on Lob Lolly, you'll go to what is called a visit widget interface. We worked with the team at Visit Widget to develop this and they're awesome. Um, and you can go in there and, and custom plan your own itinerary. We've also created a list of 12 uh, like preset itineraries with videos. So there's romantic getaway, rainy day in Gloucester, family fun, et cetera, et cetera. So you could go in and pick one of those and um, be, be inspired by what we've set out for you, or you can create your own itinerary and it plots all of your destinations out on a map. And then you can share that map and you can carry it with you mobily. So you could share it in a text to your travel buddies, or you can keep it on your phone for when you're walking around. Um, and that's really cool. And that, that was made possible uh, through a grant by Mass Office of Travel and Tourism. Mm. It's a great innovation. It is yeah. really smart. Mm. Yeah. So Tess, you're just starting to get comfortable in your role. And it happens to be summer where 
COVID just started to lighten up a little bit. At least people got out and about again. So it's a bit of sort of like a baptism by fire for you to come in and like, hey, it's Fiesta. Now it's a Horribles Parade. Now it's going to be the Waterfront Festival and the block parties and everything else going on. How have you been able to adjust to, to the mayhem that is summer on Cape Ann? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Um, only in the best, mayhem in the best possible way. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm getting to like, yeah, I guess, uh, not, it doesn't really feel like trial by fire. It feels much more like all the fun is happening at once, genuinely. Um, getting to experience all of these festivals that haven't been happening, right? Like, well, especially Fiesta, St. Peter's Fiesta, the Horribles Parade, block parties, all of these things are back. Um, for the first time in a few years and more exciting than ever. And that means that we're seeing more travelers. We're seeing more tourists. We're starting now that these some of these COVID restrictions are alleviating for travel. We're seeing more international travelers for the first time in a few years. Um, and at the same time, you know, restaurants and, and other tourism industry businesses are uh, adjusting to, to figuring out a post-pandemic or exiting pandemic world with all these exciting things happening. So it's been a, a blessing to be involved in it and to come in and see Gloucester in action. Yeah. So is it also your job to be kind of an ambassador, like to go to Boston and go meet with other groups there and say, you need to come to Gloucester, it's an amazing city. Is that part of your role? Big time, yeah. yeah. And not just my role, I, I can't take credit in entirety, I have an amazing board of directors as well who helps with that. Mm -hmm. um, and we're all ambassadors for Gloucester. Um, so yeah, we do trade shows. We have a beautiful show showpiece, our, our visitor guide, which goes out. We have 100,000 copies distributed across the country. Um, and we also network with other DMOs. So that's what we are. We're a destination marketing organization. That's what Discover Gloucester oh. is, to kind of give some background information for folks who aren't familiar. So we're our own designated 501c6 organization, nonprofit organization. And we work directly with the city of Gloucester as well. We get a lot of support from them to promote Gloucester. We're like the city's marketing arm. Mm -hmm. So while a lot of that, that promotion is outward facing to travelers and visitors and tourists, we also focus on our backyard tourists. And that was a big pivot that the former executive director, Elizabeth Carey and the board um, took on during COVID was looking at our backyard tourists, encouraging people to rediscover Gloucester um, mm -hmm. and, and to go to that restaurant they hadn't gone to or go on that schooner ride or go out on that whale watch and um, enjoy their own beautiful backyard. Mm. But yes, a, a short answer is yes, we do promote Gloucester well beyond the city and, and well beyond Boston, but definitely to that group. Mm -hmm. So Tess, what are some things that you have on your agenda that you want to, to share with folks? What's, what, what, what do you have to look forward to? Thanks for asking so much. Uh, one big thing going on right now is Culture Splash, and this is a weekly event. It's a collaboration between, as I mentioned, as we talked about Gloucester's two cultural districts, Harbor Town and Rocky Neck. Um, lots of history in both of these districts and uh, basically volunteers from, you know, industry leaders in, in arts and culture in both districts work together to create a lineup of events each week. Uh, this is the second year this has happened and it takes place Thursdays from 4 to 7 p.m. from June through the end of August. So the last event will be August 25th. Um, there's different cultural happenings. There are galleries open late. Restaurants participate by offering special cocktails or specials on appetizers. Um, we have a whole website so that's uh, discovergloucester.com forward slash culture dash splash. And I can send that along to share. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we have like a live Google map. We update that weekly. We update the event happenings weekly. So we serve as kind of the promotional arm for this event. Um, and these two, these two planning groups in each of the cultural districts work to highlight one specific cultural organization each week. So for example, this week in Harbortown, um, MAGMA or Movement Arts Gloucester MA is, is the highlighted cultural organization. And then in on Rocky Neck, it's Gloucester Stage Company. So MAGMA is doing like a couple free classes. They're having an open house. They're welcoming people to come see their space and learn about the events that they host and things like that. Gloucester Stage is actually, um, they also have a show of their, uh, a showing of their current production, which is Mr. Fullerton Between the Sheets, which is very interesting. I'm going tonight. Oh, you are? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're splashing. You're I'm a splasher. splashing tonight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and they're also actually hosting live music at the ice cream gallery at Rocky Neck. So in addition to having their play, they're doing, they're, they're providing a free service as part of this event. Um, but there's so much to explore. Every week, there's like a whole list of things going on. We have over 40 cultural institutions participating throughout the summer. So uh, as you have come to learn about Gloucester, what has been one thing that surprised you? Hmm. That's a good question. It really okay. surprised you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I guess one thing that I find to be true about Gloucester is that it's this really cool mix of being a small town and having like a lot of homey feelings to it, right? A lot of like hometown folks, long standing family lineage, but also it's a very welcoming place at the same time. And it's like, to me, it's like as big as a small town can get without being like a, a giant city, even though it is a city um, and there's so much to offer, it still feels like you're in a really authentic Place. You're in a place that has a lot of deep-seated history and uh, cultural abundance and community, um, but is really open for everyone and is encour encourages people to visit and explore it. And, and everywhere I go, everybody has a story. I mean, I and I love that. Like Culture Splash has been so cool for that because I'm walking into these different galleries and talking to the gallery owners, artists, and they're just like, "This this painting has a story. Let me tell you about that." So. Our, um, talking to boaters and schooner captains, and let me tell you about the history of our schooner. Let me tell you about this bird, like you know, uh, the seagull on the schoonery Landon, for example, Polly. But everywhere you go, someone wants to tell you about something. Um, <laughs> something is known, and, and I mean that in the best possible yeah, right, way. Right, exactly. You get a really cool story about yeah. Gloucester and about its history. So I love that. It's yeah. been a, a pleasant surprise. I think that really rings true that there's a story in every two feet in Gloucester. Yeah. And of course, our quirky island personality as well. <laughs> so Tess, have you gone to the point like you'll know when you're uh, acclimated to Gloucester when you think driving to Beverly is too long. <laughs> yeah. You'd rather just stay here instead. Yeah. Yeah, we know <laughs> that, that we're close to Boston and, and all these cities. Yeah, like yeah. not everybody thinks that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's, you know, it's just because we have everything we need, right? Yeah. Yeah. Self-sustaining, right? Island. Yeah, exactly. We have it all. <laughs> exactly. Very yeah. cool. Okay, so uh, lastly, if people want to learn more about Discover Gloucester and find out about all these events, how can they go about doing that? Go to discovergloucester.com. That's the place to go. We have um, our websites broken down into events and things to do. We also have that little visit widget, which is pulls from our whole website. So that's a fun place to learn. And you should follow us on Instagram at Discover Gloucester and on Facebook. We're Discover Gloucester on Facebook as well. Um, and I'm always happy to chat with anyone who's interested in learning more about what we do. My email is tess at discovergloucester.com. There you have it, folks. Tess McColl, again, she is the new executive director for Discover Gloucester. Tess, I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation with you, too. Uh, so always tap our shoulder when you want to share something that's going on around our city. Thank you. I will. Interested in a sponsorship? Email sponsor at 1623studios.org to learn more.